Hi artist, do you love being outside? I love being outside and exploring. It's a great way to learn about science, hands on. I can't wait for you to meet my friends that I found in nature. So come on inside the world of Roe's Paint Box and meet them. Let's go. It's Roe's world, the place to be, to share your creativity. Jump in and dance, create and play. Imagination soar away. So grab your brush, put on your smocks, paint and learn in the pink box. It's Roe's world and your world too. So grab your tools and step right through. Come on in, everyone. Oh, I'm so excited you are here today. And you get to meet my friend, Melenis. Melenis, can you show us what you brought? I painted a mouse. She painted a mouse. So let's take a guess whether the mouse is nocturnal or diurnal. Lucy. Nocturnal. Is it nocturnal, Melenis? Yes. It is nocturnal. Brit from the Wildlands is gonna help us learn a little bit more about nocturnal animals, and we might even meet one. You ready? Let's go. Do you want to tell us a little bit about nocturnal animals before we play the game? Yep, so guys, nocturnal animals simply means wildlife that comes out to hunt at night. You will find both small prey and larger predators if you come out at nighttime. All of my friends here have done their own artwork and your job is to guess whether their animal that they've drawn or painted is nocturnal or not. Are you ready? They're gonna introduce themselves and then I'm gonna call on you and you're gonna guess. Hi, my name is Anna and I drew an owl. So Lucy, what do you think? Do you think the owl is nocturnal and comes out at night or do you think it comes out during the day? It's nocturnal. So your owl is going to come out at night and they are hunters. They only eat meat, so they are referred to as a bird of prey and they have a hooked beak for ripping and tearing that meat. And those big eyes are going to help them see their prey. That's an amazing painting. Great job. Hi, my name is Izzy and I drew a hedgehog. What do you think, Finnegan? Do you think a hedgehog is nocturnal? No. It is nocturnal. So do you have anything to add, Britt, about a hedgehog? So hedgehogs are smaller, they're adorable, and they look spiky like a porcupine, but those spikes that you're seeing are not barbed and they're not poisonous, so they're not as dangerous as a porcupine. That's an amazing drawing. My name is McKenna, and I drew a cardinal. Wow, look at that, a cardinal. Okay, Amelia, what do you think? Cardinal, nocturnal, or not nocturnal? Nocturnal. What do you say, Britt? So that is a diurnal animal. It eats seeds, so it has a cone-shaped beak for cracking open seeds. So it comes out during the day, right? So a cardinal is not nocturnal. Great job, McKenna. All right, let's see what's up next. Hi, my name is David, and I draw a raccoon. How about you, Annie? What do you think about a raccoon? Nocturnal. And what do you see on David's painting that would give you a hint, Aiden? Well the dark night with all the stars and the moon. That's right. Great job, David, helping us out on that one. So one way to identify a raccoon is to look at its face. It almost looks like it's wearing a burglar's mask, right? And they're one of the animals most known for going into your trash can at night. They love to scavenge. And even if you close the lid, they actually have thumbs like we do. So we'll just pull that lid right off. Well, thank you to all our artists who helped us with our nocturnal game. You did amazing artwork. So can we give them a round of applause? Are you ready to meet our special, special guest that Britt brought to help us with our painting today? Come on out here, Britt, and let us meet our special guest. I knew it. This is Cabbage from the Wildlands Conservancy. Everyone say hello to Cabbage. Isn't he adorable? So Britt, can you tell us a little bit about Cabbage? Sure, so Cabbage is a striped skunk. If you guys look at his claws, he's got nice big claws for digging up his favorite food, which is grubs. He loves to dig up the insects that are burrowing in the ground. Now this is a domesticated skunk, which means 
it can't spray you. So, yes, very good. Do you guys have any idea what the first sign is that a skunk may spray you? What are they gonna do with their bodies? Stick up their tail. Very good, they're gonna stick up their tail because the glands that they would use to spray you with are located just below their tail. Now skunks can spray up to 10 feet and they have the ability to aim their spray. So they're going to aim for your eyes if they can because what happens if you get sprayed? If you're an animal like a dog and you're trying to get to a skunk, what are you gonna do if you get sprayed? Are you gonna keep chasing it? No, you're gonna stop, right? Oh, you feel sick, my eyes hurt, I can't see, and that skunk is going to have time to waddle away. If you look at their little limbs, they've got short, short legs, so they can't run very fast, they're not very strong, all they can do is spray and waddle away as quick as they can to try to get away. <laughs> he can weigh between six and eight pounds. He's pretty well fed, so he's probably on the, the eight pound side of that scale. Do you guys want to touch cabbage? Okay, so I'll bring him around. You can give him a pet down the back and you can feel that thick, soft fur. Thank you, Britt, for visiting us today and for bringing Cabbage to see us because now we are ready to paint a nocturnal animal. And can you guess what we're gonna paint? What? Skunk. skunk. A skunk. So thank you, Britt. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are gonna paint Cabbage today. We're gonna put a night sky behind him, we're gonna put some grass underneath him, and a moon in the sky. Does that sound awesome? Okay, so you have two brushes in your water. You're gonna take the smaller brush out, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make Cabbage's shape first. You can follow along on your iPad, Amelia, okay? I'm gonna use a gray color to put Cabbage's shape in. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of black, a little bit of white, and I'm gonna make his face shape first, which is just gonna be a long oval shape, just like that. And then I'm gonna make his body. And Britt told us he had a pretty long, heavy body, right? So it's just another long oval. We're gonna cover over these shapes with lots of brush strokes or lots of pencil strokes, so don't feel like you're stuck with these shapes. We're gonna go over them. We're gonna do a big, long tail, so it's gonna go up, back down. That looks like a banana, doesn't it? That's gonna get covered over with big, long brush strokes. And then we're gonna put his feet shapes down here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our night sky behind us. Draw a line under him. I'll use blue. Just put it right under his body, just like that. And I'm gonna to switch to the big brush and I'm gonna use a really bright blue. I'm gonna go all around these shapes. Nice big brush strokes. Okay, and get really close to the skunk shape. Ooh, it looks amazing. You're good with that iPad, Amelia. Once you have your sky color filled in for the background, we're gonna go down to underneath cabbage. And what I put underneath cabbage was a combination of brown and green. I'm gonna wash off my brush. I'm still using my big brush. I'm gonna dry it off. And I'm gonna use the brown first. I'm gonna go right under that line. And I'm gonna make it look like little crisscross shapes, so make little X's with it. So I'll dip it in the brown, and I'll dip it in the green. See how nice that green is? It's a really bright green. I'm not blending the colors together, I'm just crisscrossing my brush strokes so that you can see each of the brush strokes. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna wash off my brush and dry it off, and then I'm gonna go back to cabbage. I'm gonna start filling in Cabbage's colors, which are what? White and black. White and black, okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a dip in the black, and I'm gonna start doing my brush strokes. So I'm gonna go outside those lines we made. Do you see how I'm doing that? 
I'm not gonna smooth it out, I'm gonna make it look like fur. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of white right in the center of his face, just like that. He had some white striping right down his back, so I'll leave some white area right at the top. I'll go down to his feet, I'll do the same thing so it looks like fur, and then I'll go up to his tail, and I'll leave a little white in the center, and then you'll wash off your brush and dry it off, and then you're gonna dip in the white. So now I'm gonna put the white fur on. So you wanna wait till your black's dry or else it's gonna turn gray, so you get a nice white coat. You wanna put a little white stripe down his face. Now to get the moon on top of the blue, here's what you're gonna need to do. Wash off your brush and dry it off. And you're gonna to wanna to put a white circle first, so put a dot of white. And swirl the white around until you get the moon shape you want. Then swirl the yellow on top of it. And then you can go back and you can add stars in the background. And then you have to sign your painting. And if you don't want to name your skunk cabbage, you can come up with your own name because now you made your own skunk. I'm going to name it Snuggles. <laughs> Snuggles is a good one. Your skunks are looking great. So everyone at home who followed along, I can't wait to see what you did. So share it with me at Rowie's Paint Box. And I can't wait to see you next time in the world of Rowie's Paint Box. See you then. Wow, Lucy, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs>